What's up guys? So I'm going to do a bit of a tier list on the OTS packs, how they've been. What's a bit interesting is um, I'm not really that... I'm not really that into <laughs> to getting OTSs from tournaments. I prefer when we just get like side sets and stuff. Um, just because I'm, I'm not really bothered about what rarity my cards are. Like, I, I just like getting the new cards. And it seems like sometimes my luck with OTS does suck a bit. Like in this latest one with like Droplet and Save Dragon, I literally have pe pulled so many OTS, but not one um, ulti, which has been quite sad because I really wanted Droplets as a Dark Lord player. But um, yeah, still, why, why not go through all of them? Talk about, yeah, so I'll, I'll base it on. Um, the cards how good the cards are and how good i think they will look so i'm um, start off with we've got pack one and the cards in pack one were bountiful artemis vanity fiend and dark law so dark law's good dark law's definitely good i don't know but um vanity fiend ugh, i guess that's okay i'm okay vanity fiend is kind of like so this is my opinion on OTS. i feel like with an ulti i mean i know the principle is supposed to be like a, either a meta card or like a, a really important card um, in a deck and stuff but me I, I want it to be if it's going to be a monster I want it to be like an extra deck awesome monster or something and like Vanity's Fiend I guess is kind of that but not really and Battle Path and Artemis definitely not I know once upon a time I think a um, fairies won worlds but I mean pff, that card looks stupid anyway <laughs> Dark Claw looks awesome though but um, I definitely put one in could be better I mean they were just starting off Konami didn't really know fully what they were going for but I'd say just based on that, um, yeah, it's, this isn't an amazing one, but it's not terrible. We also have to keep in mind, though, having said that, at the time, at the time, I mean, all of these cards were okay. What, what year was this in? This was, this was 2016. So at the time, I'm sure that um, people were kind of happy with this, but um, for me, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't have wanted this. Um, what else is there? They had some cool supers. Draw was quite cool. Anti spell and Imperial Iron Wall, Iron Wall as well. That's quite cool. But, um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It says short print here. Short, was short print like an actual thing before? Wait, let me just quickly move on to the tab. I'm going off script a bit. But, nope. Yep, yeah, they actually had, like, fully on. This is where the, sh the, the short print phrase came from. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's a bit of Yu-Gi-Oh trivia that I didn't know before. Um, I'm, I'm going to research that in my own time. But let me carry on with the video. Anyway, yeah. So, pack two. Pack two. Um, in pack two, they had Fog King, Kuraz, and Rageki. Now, I've never heard of this card in my life, Fog King. What, what, what is this? Okay, this card looks irrelevant. I, yeah, I don't know if it's ever been a thing, but yeah, that looks rubbish. <laughs> Kuraz is cool, though, and Rageki is definitely cool. I'd say this is better than one, because Rageki, I think... Um, by the way, I think spells tend to look the best in terms of ulti. And funnily enough, I actually had an ulti Rageki a while ago. I think... Um, we were at a tournament and then they just randomly were giving out old OTS and they gave rag and they gave OT OTS 2 for some reason and then I pulled a Rageki. So I had that chilling in my binder for a while. But um, even though Rageki is probably one of the worst looking spell ultis, I think spells tend to look the best. Um, Kurez is a cool one. Kurez has always been a cool card in Monarchs. It's not a boss monster, but it's definitely iconic a lot enough. And, and it's color scheme as well. I feel like it really works. I'm going to put... This could be better as well, so I'll put in could be better as well, but it's not terrible. This is almost like okay tier for me. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a terrible one. And then OTS3, so Swap Frog, Speed Dray, Teratop, and Grand Pulse. So, look, Swap Frog, Frogs and Teratop, definitely, they're both good ones. I mean, I don't like either of those archetypes. I'm not, I'm not a fan of Frogs. I'm not a fan of, of um, Speed Droids either. The Speed Droids are getting some new support. support. It'll be interesting to see if they become like um, a relevant Synchro deck. I don't think so, but, I mean, we'll see what happens. Grand Pulse, eh. Superquants. Superquants is like, they have so much potential, but I feel like they're the kind of deck that just shows Konami sometimes like to act like they don't know how to make a deck good. Superquants could have so much potential as a combo deck if Konami just like gave them good support. I mean, that applies to a lot of decks. But I don't know, Konami just seems to be determined to keep them in the dirt. But um, in terms of the actual cards, like I said, I want my cards to be boss monsters. I'm, I don't want some tiny ass swap frog as my what, what, what even is that? Like. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Bottom of OK tier for me. I know. I know. Look, look, guys. This is my opinion. If you don't like it, it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> if you don't like it, tough. Make your own video, and then you can put Swap Frog in S tier. But for me, Swap Frog is definitely going to be a could be better as well. Better than one and two, um, but still not amazing. Um, Speed Road as well. I mean, if who cares? And Grand Pulse. I mean, I think Grand Pulse would look sick. I think X Y Zs and spells. X Y Z spells and fusion. So I think if I was to put in order, I think spells. Fusions look the best, though with the stipulation of some fusions look a lot better than the other. And then after fusions, I would say XYZs, and then after that, I would say spells in terms of what looks best as always. 
and then OTS 4. So this one, I know, yeah, this is actually when I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Or like when I started playing tournaments. I, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in like 2013. Because I started playing when Dark... 2012, 2011? I don't know. I started playing when Dark World came out. Dark World Structure Tech was actually my first deck. But I didn't start going to tournaments and stuff and playing properly um, until 2017. Yeah, round about now. Because I remember um, this is actually the first ulti I pulled, which was um, an S39 Utopia the Lightning. And it's a really funny story. At the time, I didn't really know anything. I didn't, I didn't know what was going on, even though it's not like I know a lot now. <laughs> but I didn't really know, and so as a result, um, I pulled a lightning, and then um, the guy here, my local, he's a prick. This guy was a massive douche. I didn't know. I just thought, oh, this card has a bit of a silver border or whatever. Like, I knew it must be worth a little bit, but I didn't even have the common sense to check on eBay, and so I ended up trading it away for, like, pennies. Like, not even, but like, not money, but I traded it away from, like, for some random, like, XYZ I needed or something. It, it was absolutely stupid of me <laughs> at the time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was the first ulti I got. Um, Utopia the Lightning, but um, yeah, Instant Fusion and Sun of Strikes, solid ones. Utopia the Lightning, even now, by the way, guys, Uto I'm gonna so I'm gonna put this top of good tier, almost amazing to be honest, because I think this is a sick pack. And Utopia the Lightning, guys, look, if you're a budget player right now and you're having trouble with Dragoon, Utopia the Lightning, bro. I mean, this card is still a solid budget option for outing those big monsters because they can't respond to it in the battle phase. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's just that good. It beats over anything with less than 5,000 attack and your opponent can't stop you doing it. So, yeah, definitely. If your deck can make a rank four easily and you need some sort of budget out to Dragoon, yeah, man, pick up your Utopia, Utopia the Lightning and be crashing into people. Unfortunately, picking up the ulti, I think the ulti's probably still worth like 70 quid now. So you're not going to be able to get an ulti, but you'll be able to get a cheap one somehow. But yeah, Insta Fusion and Solemn, they're definitely really good ones. Sally A and C actually came out on this, which is quite cool as well. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely a nice OTS pack. Then we have OTS 5. So this is Ghost Ogre, Whiptail, and Terraforming. So this is like when the format was... <laughs> I remember this as well, because I, I didn't like the format at this moment. Like, I didn't really understand what was going on, but I remember I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! on my Android, and... Um, I didn't like Zodiac. I didn't know what they did, but I just knew I didn't like them. Like, I knew that one monster will come on field, and then I'd just see animations of loads of monsters summoning. I'm like, what the flip? This isn't even XYZ. Like, ah. Uh. I mean, Z Zodiac's is, is... I'll do a video on it later, actually. But Zodiac is the best example for the problem with Link ones. Or the problem with one card extra deck monsters, essentially. If, if you can ever get into the extra deck just via one card, it's almost always going to be an issue. And Zodiac is, like, the perfect example of that. They were Link ones before Link ones even existed. Um... But yeah, terraforming, good, iconic spell. Ghost Ogre, yeah, as a hand trap, it's a good one to get, to be honest. And at the time, I remember at the time as well, like when Ash Blossom and Ghost Ogre both are, I think Ghost Ogre was the first, um, de not even it was, it definitely was the first, because it was before it was even like an archetype, they released Ghost Ogre. But yeah, Ghost Ogre used to be a big problem as well. Like I remember back in the day, just getting Ghost Ogre was so frustrating. I was playing, um, so my first deck was Dark Worlds. Then I was playing Phantasm Spiral. And I remember getting hit by all my fields of this used to be so frustrating. This is before I discovered Sea Stealth Attack. I don't even know if it was out or not. But um, yeah, getting hit with um, a Ghost Ogre was the worst thing in the world. When you're playing Phantasm Spire because then you can't play the game because your field spell gets killed. But um, anyway, yeah, moving on. So, oh, where did I put five? Have I put five in yet? Yeah, so five, like I said, this is an okay one. It's not a bad one at all. But yeah, let's move on to OTS 6. So OTS 6... Deco Talker, Brilliant Fusion, Invocation. So, like, Invocation, yeah, I think that's one of the best-looking ulties, definitely. Looks insane. Same with Brilliant Fusion. I think Brilliant Fusion looks really gorgeous. I think as a card, by the way, just the artwork for Brilliant Fusion looks really, really good as well. Deco Talker, I mean, eh, it's a Link Monster. Like, they had to give a Link Monster, and this is before Link Monsters were becoming too incredibly crazy. They were good, but they still weren't as crazy as they are now, where it's like, well, even now I wouldn't say they're crazy. I'd say... It was more like Thunder Orca Skyshock format, where we started seeing those really, really just degenerate Link 2s that were just dominating the format. But um, even then, yeah, um, Deco Talk's not a terrible one. I would say this is definitely another okay tier. Okay, maybe even good tier, because Invocation is a really, really good one, and Brilliant Fusion is a really, really good one. Let's say bottom of good tier. Definitely a good one. Not as good as the last OTS, but um, definitely one you would have been happy to get for sure. Yeah. Then we move into OTS 7. So OTS 7, Herald of Orange Light, Link Spider, and Cosmic Cycle. And I can't lie, this is absolutely crap to me. <laughs> Link Spider, who the flip cares? Yeah, I mean, people are using Link Spider in their decks. I mean, it's always been a relatively popular Link Monster. But for Link Climbing, like, you're not <laughs> you're not attacking with Link Spider for game or anything. Herald of the Orange Light, again, who cares? Pe even now, oh my gosh, people are spending like 60 quid now on their Drytrum decks for like copies of like ulti Heralds and I don't know. I feel like you can only do that if you have more money than sense. I don't, I don't know why you'd ever want an ulti herald of the orange light. 
Um, and then Cosmic Cyclone as well, again, it's... I feel like it also looks crap. Twin Twister to Ulti looks way better than Cosmic Cyclone. So I'm actually going to put this in terrible. I think this is... I would have been upset. <laughs> Luckily enough, I was still very bad. I'm bad now, but I'm, I was still much worse than... So it's not like I was getting enough OTS to be pulling ultis in the first place. But yeah, let's move on. OTS 8. So OTS 8 was Droll, Kogari, and Scapegoat. And this is one thing Konami started doing that I really liked. Or well, not started doing. I don't know if they did it with any other. I don't think they did it with any other archetypes. But with Sky Strikers, where they gave each Sky Striker monster, um, each strike, well, each strike, Sky Striker link, obviously not the link two because it wasn't out at this time. They gave all of them an ulti printing, which I thought was really cool. I like the idea of like, that you, there's this deck which like everything can be ulti in it almost. Well, not everything, but a lot of the cards can be ulti. Um, yeah, and I think it's also a sign. It's, it's a good sign because I think it carried on for like five OTS. It's a good sign of just how long Sky Strike was in the format, just how popular it is, just how meta it was. The fact that it lasted that long to get four, five different ulti printings is absolutely insane. But yeah, Scapegoat was also running rampant, so you had the Trickstar Sky Striker builds around Scapegoat and just people in general. I mean, this is um, just this is still when. Um, you, we could abuse tokens in Link format. That lasted for a very long time. You had the start of Link format where you had Link monsters were basically just like glorified field spells that were monsters. Like they were just boosting your attack or they would have really basic recursion. And then you had like kind of the next stage where we started to get a bit of a bit of bustedness, a bit of um, a bit of um, degeneracy, things like Skulder and stuff. And then you had the token stage where it's like all of the tokens suddenly start getting slapped down and hit because Konami realized all these token generators were just absolutely busted for Link monsters. And scapegoat was the was one, I think it's one of the only ones that is still alive now. But even though it's only at one, but yeah, it was it was it's still an awesome card. Even now, you can still abuse scapegoat to an extent. It's just the fact that it's at one makes it. There's not that many decks that can relevantly abuse it, but it's still not even a terrible card now. And then draw as well. Hand traps are always pretty good when they get. It. So yeah, opiate um, uh, number eight. I'd say another one that's definitely in the good. Um, yeah, I definitely like this. Also, Ruin and Demise. I, I love Ruin and Demise, so the fact that they got supers is pretty cool as well. Rituals is my favorite monster type, in case you guys don't know. OTS 9. So you got Stratus, Licorice, and Suzuku. So this, it could almost be amazing. I don't know, because Stratus is a good one. Look, I don't like heroes. I hate heroes. I think it's a stupid archetype. But I recognize that loads of people love heroes. And um, just the fact that they did Stratus is awesome. Um, Shizuku as well is really cool. I think Shizuku is probably the, the coolest Sky Striker looking Sky Striker monster to me as well. I think the blue with the link, it just really works well. And then having the ulti print on top is also awesome. Licorice, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was a big, it was a very relevant monster for Trickstars, and at the time it was doing a lot. But um, yeah, this is, you know, I will put this in amazing tier, just because, yeah, I think just, the, the, I have to give the respect because of Stratos and Shizuku. Definitely, it definitely was a very, very good OTS um, in general. But yeah, let's move on to OTS 10. So OTS 10 and this, look, this, I'm already going to do it now. So this, in my opinion, was the best OTS ever released. I remember when this one was released. I was so happy. I think everything in this was epic. So you had Colossus, Hayate, and Galatea. So Colossus looks insane. I pulled two ulti Colossuses. And that card looks absolutely beautiful in ulti. Like, even to this day, um, I, I made sure when I bought my Thunder Dragon deck again. I bought Thunder Dragon for like one month and then I sold it. But I made sure I bought ulti Colossus and I've just kept them aside just in case Thunders come back because Colossus looks insane. Hayate also looks very good in the in the ulti and Galatea as well. well both the Orcas, Galatea and Dingy both look epic in um, in ulti. So yeah, this was definitely a very, very good um, OTS. And also this is my favorite format as well. This is the Thunder, Orcas, Sky Striker Salad format. This is when I really started to get competitive, I would say, where, where I finally started to figure out how to actually play the game a little bit. And um, I just really, really like this format. I feel like this was a... A, a, a relatively balanced format like there was this kind of like trifecta of strong top decks but you could still play rogue and i mean i was saying i was figuring out the game i was playing flipping dark lord grand Marju at this time so <laughs> yeah but um i definitely really really enjoyed this format i think this ots was insane the picks were insane and just in general i was having a lot of fun traveling to regionals and stuff so yeah definitely a really really good period of Yu-Gi-Oh for me the glory days the glory days 20 um 2019 2018 slash 2019, really enjoying um, this period of Yugo. Then moving into pack 11, you got Dengi, Kaina, and Desires. This is another very good one. This has to be an amazing tier as well. And one of the things I would definitely say about OTS is they definitely got better over time. Um, the start ones, ugh, not amazing, but I would say as time's gone on, there's only been like one or two, not even one or two, I think just one in recent memory. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's 15. 
I was like, I was like, this is absolutely trash. But in general, I'd say the Yetis have been have been getting a lot better over time. But yeah, Desire is awesome. I think Desire also looks very good in OT. Dingy looks beautiful in OT. Dingy, Dingy. So XYZs. I, I think in general, high rarities work well, or unique rarities work really well with XYZs, just because the contrast with the black always works well. So you've got kind of the silvery bluey ulti with the black um with the black um XYZ looks great and kind of just to kind of round out the sky strike. So this was definitely another really good one. Dingy was another ulti that I pulled a couple of. Yeah, my luck was insane. I, I was pulling ultis like every week. It was quite insane. What was nice as well is because the locals I was going to literally had like 25 to 30 people a week. And so as a result, it was like new fresh boxes each week so it was easy like you were going to be pulling all these all the time it's not like when you only have like 10 people at your locals so you might not get like a new box every week so it's like you know that oh two three of the always have been pulled <laughs> we're not seeing anything till next week it wasn't like that every week multiple always were getting pulled which was quite nice but um yeah moving on to pack 12 so levy and twin twisters and solemn judgment this is another really really good one judgment is awesome twisters is awesome levy and at this time was also doing bits for lots of different decks um i remember this is um when i saw team samurai he was playing cyber dragon in c i don't i think it's seen at most tournament or something I remember he teched in Levianir to his Cyber Dragon deck and it was flipping nuts. And I was like, what the flip? Yeah, it, it was actually bad the way he used it. But um, yeah, Levianir definitely um, um, a really good one along with Twisters and Solemn Judgment. Judgment ulti looks great as well. I think um, the Solemn cards all look pretty good in ulti. So this is definitely going to be another amazing OTS pack. Like, with the amazing ones, I feel like it's definitely a case of I'm happy pretty much regardless of what I get. That's the great thing about all the amazing um, um, level OTS. Then we move on to pack 13. So this had Book of Moon, Dweller, and Reflegia. So this is not as good as the last few. I'd say the last the, the last were all good. But then at the same time, even though this wasn't as good as the last few, I, if I'm not mistaken, I feel like this is the beginning or like middle of COVID season or something. So it didn't really matter. <laughs> like, who, who the flip cared? We weren't going to tournaments anyway. But yeah, it was Book of Moon, Dweller, and Reflegia. So Book of Moon is kind of meh. Dweller is probably the best. Because it's like, wow, this is an iconic card that's needed it for a while. Reflesia, I mean... <laughs> someone's deck. So, someone here likes Trap Tricks, I'm sure. So that could definitely go in OK tier. It wasn't an amazing one for sure. It wasn't terrible, but definitely wasn't amazing. Um, yeah, de definitely a really interesting OTS. Then we move on to pack 14. So Super Poly, Toon Kingdom, and Iberi. So this is another great one. Super Poly is one of my favorite cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's always been one of my favorite cards. I think it's really, really great. Um, Nibiru as well is just a nice ulti to get. And then Toon Kingdom, I, I have no interest in Toons, but I'd say similar to Heroes, um, Toon Kingdom is the kind of card where it's like, it, I, I recognize it. There's a level of respect it needs because it's been iconic in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I know there are a lot of Toon fans. So this is definitely another good slash amazing. Should I say good or amazing? I think, I think it can go in amazing. I think there's enough people that would have been happy with all of the cards in this. But yeah, definitely a really, really good, um, a really, really good OTS pack. Then we move next into pack 15. And yeah, you're right. This is the one that I hate the most. So look, I, I appreciate that Hulk got the ulti. I don't actually appreciate it. I don't like Hulk. I hate Hulk. <laughs> so no, I don't appreciate it. But what I mean is I recognize that it's cool that Hulk got the ulti, but the card itself pisses me off. I don't like Hulk. I, I wish it never came to the TCG. As I was seeing it in the OCG for years and years and years, um, I was happy it wasn't coming. Then Konami brought it over to us and I was just like, oh, flipping stupid ass card. And uh, by the way, guys, I know that the OTS isn't when the card came, just in case you guys don't realise. I'm just prejudiced enough against the cards that I'm going to hate on this OTS pack, specifically because Hulk was in it. That upset me. <laughs> but no, yeah, Dark Requiem XYZ, I mean, it was already an expensive card. I don't like, that's the other thing as well. I'm not a fan of when expensive cards get ulti print ins. Now, I know it's often, this will happen a lot of the time. I mean, for example, Desires was an expensive card to go on, go on ulti print in. This is going to happen a lot of the time anyway. But um, it just, it gets on my nerves. And Requiem XYZ was already hard to get hold of. So giving it all year, just like, ugh, whatever. Also, I, I just don't like the card that much anyway. I think it's pointless. Um, PK was playing it for a little bit, but then they moved on to bigger and better things. And then Arm Dragon level 10, that whole Arm Dragon gimmick, I think is stupid as well. <laughs> I, I have no respect for um, Arm Dragons. I think it's stupid. So yeah, that's definitely a 15 for me. Um, not 15, sorry. That's definitely a terrible for me. I didn't like that OTS at all. 
And then we move on to pack 16. So this is Cyber Dragon, Firewall Dragon, and Forbidden Droplet. So yeah, this is a great one. Another thing as well is it had King of the Skull Servants in Super, which Skull Servants, I mean, loads of us played Skull Servants when we were little. This is like one of those like interesting decks when we were really young. A lot of us tried out. So um, yeah, definitely a good one. Um, nothing too bad to say about this. Um, Droplet, oh, I really wish I picked up Droplet. I'm still, look guys, I'm still going to be picking up my ulti Forbidden Droplets because that card just looks so gorgeous. And I think as well, I love Dark Lords as well. Their Lorna artwork is awesome. So I think that as well, it's really cool to see kind of what's happening with, um, was it, is it Naston being corrupted by the Condemned Witch, which is really cool. But yeah, this is definitely a good OTS pack. It's a shame this OTS pack as well had slightly inflated prices due to obviously us coming out of lockdown. So again, low demand, not many of this packs in the system. And so as a result, that was quite, especially at the beginning, it was just ridiculously expensive. I think Droplets was sitting at like £180 or something ridiculous um, for a while, which was a, which was a bit silly. But yeah, definitely another good OTS. And then the last one, the one that recently got announced, which is going to be Utopia, Imperm, and Black Glass Soldier, Soldier. Okay, so this is a bad one. I'm actually gonna say this is a bad one. Utopia, I really like. Impermanence, I really like. But actually, no, it's not a bad one. But it's it's below average, and it's because this one is probably the better example compared to 15 um, with the Dark Requiem XYZ, where they reprinted. So Black Glass Soldier has three prints right now. It has a secret print, it has a ghost rare print, and it has an ulti print now. And this card is frustratingly it's frustrating this card is like it's actually a good card and a lot of people would probably play it as a generic rank three in their decks but you can't a lot of people can't because most people don't want to fish out the like 80 or 90 pounds to pay for this card that's it's not it's not bad it's good but it's not amazing so it's like is it worth fishing it out and it would see so much play if it wasn't for that and it's also an archetype that's iconic as well black cluster but um yeah for some stupid reason konami is just only giving this card really high high rarity printings, Ghost, Ulti, and Secret for some reason. So as a result, it's hard to get hold of this card, and that's why um, I'm going to put this as a... I'll put it as a okay, just because of that. That knocks it down. If it wasn't for that and it was something else, this could be in the good tier, because Utopia... Utopia, I love Utopia, the Utopia theme. Imperm is also a great one, but the Black Cluster Soldier definitely... Um, it knocks this down a peg. It's not as good as it could be. But anyway, yeah, guys, so yeah, those are the OTS. Those are my rankings for the OTS. So um, as you can see, I'll take Konami in general. They they have been getting better over time, though. We have got a lot of really good OTSs. Hopefully, the next one, 18, is, is awesome. I don't know. Someone needs to, like, go do a mad one with Dark Lords and get Dark Lord X shell as an ulti. If you guys can do that, I love you forever. But <laughs> um, in any case, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Enjoy your days. Peace.